very quick disclaimer. I would only watch this video if you are absolutely stuck on a certain artifact trigger. Why do I say that? Well, I think most of the fun of being a scientist is figuring these things out yourself, but I do also understand how frustrating it could be trying to figure out the more ambiguous ones, and it could especially be frustrating if there's no other experienced scientist to ask these questions. Currently in game, there are 18 different artifact triggers, and what's a trigger? It's a stimulus. I think the terms, terms are kind of interchangeable. Uh, stimulus is definitely the more official term, but I think literally code-wise they're referred to as triggers. But anyways, it's just whatever you have to do to make the artifact react. And I'm not going to do them in any particular order because I don't really know if there's an easy way to make this go in a particular order, but I will show all 18. Nep Zero has five potential triggers. One of them is tool usage. It is very simple. To trigger tool usage, it just means use a wrench. And as you can see, it interrupted the environment. Hydroreactive simply just means you have to spray with water. The easiest way to do that is with a fire extinguisher, which you can almost always find pretty much in the same room. And to spray with the fire extinguisher, you just press Z and left click it with harm turned off. And that completes the hydroreactive. Extreme pressure is a slightly tricky one. However, there's a pretty easy tip here. There's two extreme pressures in the game, but they differ depending on target depth. A target depth, it actually means low pressure, and on most stations you just click a singular button to release the artifact to space, and then you just have to wait for the pressure to uh, lower in the chamber, and there you go. It hit low pressure, and that is the low pressure art, uh, stimulus. Examination is probably the literally easiest one in the game other than the timer stimulus, because all you have to do is you just shift click it, and that will activate it. Active deceleration is only on the handheld artifacts, and all you have to do is you pick it up and you toss it. And I got a microphone. And conveniently enough, I got a sonic vibrations. All sonic vibrations is, is you have to pull out an instrument and literally just press Z, and it will activate the artifact. Radiation is actually one of the hardest stimulus to actually get in the game to activate, but there's a few ways that you can reasonably pull this off. If it's a handheld one, it's actually really easy. You just stick it in a microwave. The second easiest is probably um, the gravity anomaly, because that always puts off radiation, and you can just kind of drag the artifact into it. And the third way is to drag it to the singularity, but that's clearly the most dangerous for obvious reasons. But for this one, it's real simple. You just stick it in a microwave, and, and it activated inside the microwave. Just hope it doesn't explode. Life essence simply just means that something dies within the presence of the artifact. Most often, the easiest thing to do is get a mouse, which, oh my god, this AI mouse is breaking my ankles. Oh, what have I done? Okay, so you get the mouse. And you just make sure you kill it in near the presence of the artifact. So sometimes it's a little tricky. Oh my... Oh my... And once it actually dies, you will trigger the artifact. Gaseous plasma can be a somewhat tricky uh, stimulus due to the fact that m not all science uh, maps have plasma in a canister round start, but you can always go to Atmos, and most Atmos techs are crazy enough that they'll probably just give you a max cap if you ask. So asking for a plasma canister isn't too hard, but I believe every map in the game has this very simple setup. You just connect the plasma to the connector port, and then you just turn on the pump, and the room will start filling with plasma. And I think once it hits a certain threshold in that room, it will activate, probably up the pressure a little bit. There we go. And once you're done with that, you're going to want to unhook the plasma, and you're going to want to turn off the pump, and probably space it all out just in case. Physical trauma means uh, you just basically beat the artifact until it activates. Uh, certain weapons are better than others, and, well, that one activated instantly. Magnetic waves can be done in two ways. The most primary way is just going to be getting mag boots, but you can also do it with the salvage magnet, uh, but definitely mag boots are the easiest way. You just walk near them, walk near the artifact, activate the mag boots, and you're good to go. Extreme pressure at depth 3 is the opposite of low pressure. We need high pressure. And again, this canister of gas, or this canister of plasma is very useful here. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to get a igniter, which, um, so I'll turn, I could just get an igniter here and a remote signaler. You need a multi-tool or a network configurator, and you just simply hook up the signaler to the 
igniter. The igniter is very simple. And you want to put the igniter... Oh my god. <laughs> you want to put the igniter into here. You want to rehook the plasma down. Turn on the pump. Wait for the room to fill with plasma, like so. And just ignite the plasma. And the pressure will keep building because it will keep burning. You may have to space it a little bit. Uh, because there's too much plasma in there, so it's actually not enough oxygen to burn. But as long as you just keep the fire going, the pressure will build. And eventually, the pressure will get high enough that it will activate the depth 3 extreme pressure. Any moment now. The pressure is certainly getting higher. I don't want to open the door and find out. Come on. Some artifacts will interact when you uh, touch them. I don't know if it's only for the handheld ones exactly, but for this one, it's an interaction. And uh, I don't even know if you'll be able to get that on a scanner because, like, I spawned this in and it wasn't, like, I had to move it. But as you can see, me picking it up is trying to kill me. Standard atmospheric gases can be somewhat difficult, but it's normally not a big deal. What standard, uh, standard gases are is oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. So pretty much if it doesn't activate right away, it's practically uh, going to be carbon dioxide. But for carbon dioxide, it's just kind of like the plasma. You can just hook it in, turn on the pump, increase the pressure a little bit. And if the carbon dioxide doesn't work, which it did, uh, like I said, it will pretty much always automatically activate from oxygen or nitrogen because those are standard. And carbon dioxide... Um, I don't know if really any science branch has them, but engineering can get it rather easily. Don't be afraid to ask them. And by engineering, I mean Atmos. High temperatures is really easy. You just need to get any form of welding tool, turn it on, walk in, and hit the artifact. Electricity really just means you have to prod it with a multi-tool, so you just get a multi-tool and left-click it, and that will set it off. Um, I think if it's near medium voltage cables, it might go off, but I'm not entirely sure. Anyways, the multi-tool gives you the greatest control over it. The last uh, stimulus I will cover is time. I don't know if you can ever actually get this one on a scanner. As you can see, ow. As you can see, that one just triggered on its own because it was on a timer. And the timers always seem to be really, really short. So I'm not sure you'll ever see that one um, on an actual artifact scanner i think it would just happen i'm sure more effects will be added after this video probably soonish making this out of date but for now this is every single artifact trigger in the game and of course you can always get artifact fragments from salvage put them in a grinder with a beaker juice it put it into a spray bottle and simply spray any artifact that you want and skip any of the reactions in the game by doing so, and this is especially useful for the more complicated reactions. Also, literally as I was about to end this recording, this is an artifact that I think quite literally is one node, and it's on a timer, so it basically just makes infinite foam, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's it just activates itself. Oh no, what's happening is that this artifact specifically is reacting on a timer and reacting to standard atmospheric gases, and that's the only nodes. So it is continuously making the room colder and spitting out slippery foam. That's incredible.